Hi everybody. Uh, today uh, our lecture is about uh, NSA NR networks uh, versus the SA NR networks. So basically, the topic that we are going to discuss is how how the difference exists between non-standalone NR networks and standalone NR networks. And as we currently uh, are in the evolution phase of NR networks. So networks have started to be set up in the NSA mode and as we are more evolving further into the direction of more NR features and more NR functionalities we are moving towards the standalone NR and of course as we move towards uh, 2025 and uh, uh, onwards from there there will be a combination of NSA and SA and of course as more refarming is done from the LD to NR then of course the SA will take as the majority uh, stakeholder in the NR networks. But of course that's all subject to the pace of NR deployment, uh, considering the external factors, which of course we're not going to discuss here uh, in terms of uh, product strategy and other things. So let's uh, uh, dig into it and uh, see that how uh, NR network evolution has taken place and how we are moving ahead with it. So I'll move to the next slide. So in terms of uh, the NR network evolution, <clears throat> as I was telling you that the initial deployments have been made with the NSA networks. So uh, NSA, we mean the non-standalone uh, networks where LT is the anchor layer, which contains all the control level information uh, while the EPC or the and the LT ran. So the concept is that uh, we still have our LT network as the primary network. So the UE when it attaches to a network, it first goes on to an LTE cell and then once it's on the LTE cell, then of course it looks for the uh, coverage of an NR cell. And if the coverage of the NR cell is satisfactory, uh, the, the B1 threshold is usually used for that, then it adds up an NR cell on top of that uh, LTE cell. In terms of network topology, your LT network will control your uh, UE in terms of cell selection, cell reselection, in terms of handovers, and etc. And the NR uh, network will just be an add on or capacity layer that will give you more throughput and uh, those kind of uh, services. The advantage of NSA, uh, as we all know, is in terms of quick deployment because you do not need to refarm any network, any frequency from the from the LT part to deploy NR. You can deploy NR in the mid-band uh, TDD layer, which is your 3.5 gigahertz layer, or you can deploy NR in the other layers as well. But your underlying network is LTE, so that has always that has contributed to the quick deployment of nr in many countries uh, around the globe and the next step in this evolution is the nr standalone the question will come uh, with the next uh, question that we will discuss is that if we are having good throughput results if we are having good deployments with the nsa why move to the nr standalone so that is the next question that we will uh, discuss so the question that I was uh, <clears throat> uh, putting in the previous slide was why deploy the NR SA networks? So the question is around strategic need for the NR standalone network. Strategic needs uh, are multiple, we will discuss it. But the first question that I would put uh, here is uh, in terms of NR SA network towards the customer in terms of both customer and vendor is to understand the strategic need of a standalone network in a market and it could be different uh, based on different markets if you are in mature markets these needs would be different if you're in a, in a you can say developing ma uh, market these needs could be different and therefore the evolution from NSA to SA will differ in its pace as well for example in mature markets where your use cases are already there or they are about to be deployed in large scale then your NRSA requirements will already be there use cases will already be there and therefore the NRSA deployment will make more sense but of course if you're in a developing market where your major requirement around NR is from throughput then of course the non standalone networks might be useful for the time being the second point which is a very common point 
uh, in terms of uh, the SA networks is the user throughput. Uh, because as you know that in the NSA network, uh, the LTE is your uh, primary uh, network and on top of that we basically uh, deploy NR networks. Uh, the total throughput that a user can get is <clears throat> both LTE plus the NR uh, throughput. So if you're aggregating around uh, 3 to 4 CC in LTE and you're aggregating around 2 carriers or 3 carriers in NR, then the amount of throughput that you get as compared to the throughput that you get when you are in the standalone mode where you do not have any LT component. So that throughput might be actually less as compared to the uh, NSA. So once you deploy SA, the UEs which go on to the standalone will have a lower throughput, overall throughput, as compared to the NSA. So this is a very interesting question, both in terms of the the multiple throughput reports that we get from uh, different uh, companies these days. That either it is beneficial to install uh, uh, to deploy a standalone network in terms of throughput. The simple there is no simple answer to it, uh, but the first answer is that throughput is not the actual aim for the standalone network when it compares to the NR deployment. The actual aim of standalone deployments is to uh, leverage the real differentiations of NR network. Number of some of them, uh, the main uh, aspect of this is the slicing concept, where once connected to the 5G core, you can uh, divide your network into different slices and those slices can be based on your core network they can be based on your radio network and even on your radio part they can be based on your cell on your node and in the end on the very low level it can be based on your service level <clears throat> so those kind of uh, differentiation you cannot do that in nsa and in in uh, in the eventual, uh, the latency part is also very important uh, in the standalone as you get way less latency in standalone networks and that can be a very important aspect for ultra reliable uh, low latency communication and the communications for example in automated cars and automated transport and automated factories where the latency is an exceptionally important stuff. So those kind of implementations will uh, primarily depend on the standalone uh, evolution. Then, of course, as you eventually reform the LT layer to NR, then you will have more uh, layers on the NR part. And then, of course, the eventual evolution will be standalone network to uh, in the NR as we, we had a standalone LT network uh, recently. Then, in the end, uh, I wanted to uh, put some uh, differences uh, between SA and NSA. The main difference between SA and NSA is uh, the initial access. So, in a standalone NR network, the initial access is also on uh, NR, and to enable that, we have to get uh, SIB1 information uh, in the information blocks communicated uh, to the UE uh, because this information is necessary for the cell selection and reselection information. And then we have to transplant the core set. Uh, the core set is basically uh, gives you the information around where the SIB1 is actually placed, where it wants to hear it, uh, listen to this uh, this message. So core set does not exist in, in NSA. And once you in uh, in, in deploy uh, SA, the core set uh, configuration needs to be configured. So that is one important part. Then in the uh, SA part, we have redirect and handovers towards and from LD and NR acts as a P cell and S cell as well. And we have connectivity to the 5G core, which gives us all those slicing uh, benefits. Uh, we also have the EPS fallback for voice, uh, which basically is a functionality where for voice services, once VONAR is not implemented, we need to fall back to the LTE network to get the voice calls done through your normal VOLTE and IMS. And then in the end, we have the VONAR, which is a similar uh, implementation of VOLTE over the uh, NR network that is called a VONAR. So I hope uh, you would have enjoyed this uh, my lecture and uh, happy new year and hopefully we continue these lectures uh, this year. Thank you so much.